healing a word of assurance a word of hope a word of satisfaction and the ultimate truth in the long journey of our lives we toil we fall we get wounded physically and mentally and want to get rid of our sufferings we do so at help to get out of our agony and pain but what we have given up on all these years is a patience for the body to recover to take its time to heal we have wanted an immediate solution and quick fix for any ailment or any problem that we face in life welcome to the women's period podcast and you're listening to revathi your host who is always happy to bear the torch light of happiness and positivity to her listeners and hence is bringing to you the stories of people who believe in miracles and are marching towards the light today i'm bringing to you dr anoop who is the founder of healthrevolution.org a startup which is believing and is making the fact true that people can recover and heal of their pain and ailments healing is possible let's get to know more from dr anoop so hello and welcome to the women's peria podcast i have somebody from the healthcare fraternity today and who is i would believe as a common man uh, myself as a common man i would say that he is blasphemizing the beliefs of a lot of people because he is like bringing healthcare and the education and the knowledge about it to the common man and is saying that healing is very much possible which yes. yes so hello and welcome to the podcast dr anu it's a privilege having you today thank you devati it's wonderful to be here and yes i think yeah. we start right off with that healing is possible right right so we get into that so before that uh, since my podcast is all about an inspiration that you get from any person do tell me that what are the two affirmations that you start your day with number 1 everything is possible right so healing is possible is a derivation from everything is possible and anything is possible yeah that's number 1 i think that's a major one you know yes. everything is possible and that puts us into a state of potential yes. right yeah. yeah that all the paths now open up yesterday was yesterday and now is now so everything is possible says okay let's see what happens let's open all the doors and see how it goes so that's how i start the day god you're extremely positive and once i don't know you know yeah. I, i don't know that i'm positive i i just think it's i feel it's true you know that it's that uh i mean look at the world look at the universe look at the diversity in the world if you zoom out and look at earth this this rock floating in space in a solar system among now we say billions of actually inhabitable planets all floating right not on yes. what we call solid ground i mean how can we say everything is not possible it's it's almost like a fantasy that's right. happening right now so i don't see it in terms of like being positive or having a positive mindset i just this is the truth everything is possible and now out of all that possibility what actually happens let's see that's true that's true so like it's all about the belief that you have so if you believe it's going to happen it will happen and also yeah the examples that you stated that things around us the universe around us everything is a fantasy but we're living with it so why isn't yeah, anything we're, possible well yeah exactly we're we're living with it and i think i think the difference between belief and and what we call reality is how deeply we see and how deeply we experience you know if i believe or think something with 5% of my resources then it's kind of 5% possible right but right. as as we look more deeply into what are the underpinnings of that belief what are the obstacles from that belief what are the actions i have to take you know what are the circumstances what is the context who do i need to partner with or to work with as all of these factors come in then it just goes much beyond belief it goes oh. it becomes like a reality so yes. i think it, it can start as an idea and then the more we engross ourselves in that then that full potential can actually show up that's manifestation yes beautiful so okay so before we start with the questions do tell us who is dr anu oh well, he's a guy who's talking to you Oh yes. 
<laughs> and what is the other? What is? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll give you a, a more comprehensive answer. But yeah. you know, he's a guy who has spent time in India and in the United States, and is working as an emergency physician, and was immersed in Advaita Vedanta as a child, and has kind of brought all of these together and learned Carnatic music, as we mm -hmm. talked about earlier. Yes. And has kind of brought all of these perspectives together to inform what we call health and healing and to commu communicate a message about the healing potential that is innate in every human being. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. So since you're into this mission, Tell us when what was your Eureka moment? When did you want, like, when did you start believing that healing is very much possible? Because you being from the doctor's fraternity, you don't have time for all this. You, all you've got to do is you have to treat people and that's what your life is all about. So you took yeah. a step beyond. Yeah. When did yeah, you start believing? Especially in emergency medicine, right? Emergency medicine True. is, is in some ways, the, yeah, the <laughs> sickest people. And when when things have gone awry for right. a long time and reached a tipping point and right. fell off the precipice in a way, that's emergency medicine many times, right? The, the real crux of emergency medicine, at least. Um, healing is possible. It really, like I said, it stems from that, <clears throat> that original perspective um, of potential, that what we are fundamentally is not primarily a bodily structure, a physical structure, we express also as physical structures. Mm -hmm. We can be interpreted also as physical structures, but fundamentally we are of the nature of potential. And this was something I explored early on in life. And so the, the more traditional schooling and ultimately medical school actually came after this. So this foundation was in place already that, you know, what we are fundamentally is not just this body. Everybody's talking about the body, 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 body. And that body is a representation of us. It's an important representation. And we cannot believe that that is fundamentally what we are. Once you do that, you're kind of lost, right? Because right. what we have done is restrict ourselves into a very narrow bracket of experience. Mm -hmm. And then we're trying to talk about diagnosis, treatment. It, it can't work because we're yeah. dealing with such an incomplete aspect of what we are. And so healing is possible simply comes from that original recognition Hmm. that there is much more to us than the body, that we are fundamentally of the nature of potential, which also expresses through mind, also expresses through body. And therefore, if that's true, then if we want something in the body to get better, naturally, we have to look at all of what we are. And when we move into those potential aspects, then things that we think are miracles or apparently miracles happen because we only consider the miracles because we are looking at a narrow aspect of ourselves. But if you look at more, if you systematize that knowledge, if you, if you make clear the levers that activate and express that knowledge, now all of a sudden you have a science of healing that goes far beyond our current diagnosis and treatment. So this is where this recognition that healing is possible come from. And on our podcast, on the healing is possible podcast on youtube we have examples of this we have people who were on diabetes medications yeah. for decades and get off in a couple of weeks by changing their food we have people who had crohn's disease bowel obstruction surgery for years who after a couple hours of a particular kind of hypnosis or looking into the mind their symptoms heal right so we're not making this stuff up this happens all the time but we tend to ignore it because mm -hmm we always look at the human being incompletely. And when we see the human being completely, then healing is possible. Beautiful, beautiful. So all these years, I, I believe in, uh, in the old age, in the old days, in the ancient times, there was this concept of healing. It was very much possible. Our ancestors, when they started medicine, when they started treating ailments. So they said that healing is possible. It was somewhere in the middle that people started, they wanted a quick uh, result for everything. That's possibly yeah. the reason why even yeah. the medical fraternity has gone, uh, like they have shut themselves from opening up to yeah. people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, yes. Certainly yes. the idea of healing has always been there. It's still there today, hmm. but healthcare doesn't talk. Actually, we're 
re releasing a video, I think today about this. Right. Why right. does healthcare not talk about healing? Yes. And one of the reasons is what you said. Yes, we want a quick solution. There are other few key reasons. One is that we think that healing is unscientific or we don't have a good definition for it, right? We don't understand it. So right. is healing the same as cure? No, it can include cure, but it doesn't have to. Is it the same as treatment? No, it can, it can include treatment, but it doesn't have to, right? Healing is a much more comprehensive understanding and exploration of what's happening. It's, it's finding the meaning in what's happening. It's right. looking at ourselves from a whole perspective. And when we do that, you know, different treatments can open up, cure can open up, all kinds of things can open up. So healing is much more comprehensive than even only treatment and even only cure. But to really understand that, again, you have to see that our model of anatomy now is human body anatomy. We don't have human being anatomy. We have only a fraction of that as human body anatomy. And so physicians, for the most part, are not comfortable talking about healing because it lies outside of our domain of expertise, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't been taught about the mind. We don't study the mind. What are the, what are the different ways that mind expresses, right? What is the actual relationship between the body and the mind? Um, what are the ranges of the mind? When does mind begin? How does it end? What is its relationship with space? What is its relationship with identity? What is its relationship with perception? What is its relationship with the physical world? And on and on and on. We don't know any of this. As professionals, we're not trained in any of this. So we don't have expertise in healing because healing goes beyond the body. It has to include mind. It has to include the subtler aspects of the human being. So we don't want to go there. The other thing is when you go outside your expertise, now all of a sudden you're not an expert anymore, obviously, right? So that credibility is threatened, right? And when your credibility is threatened, your salary is threatened, right? When your salary is threatened, your your I mean, everything is threatened. That's your identity. That's your living. So because of these reasons, we don't talk about healing and we tend to pretend like it's unscientific, but that's only because we haven't looked at our philosophical opinions to begin with. So there, there are many reasons like this why we don't talk about healing. But the idea that it's it's not a rational thing, that it can't be understood, that it can't be systematized, that's a false idea. That's simply groupthink that it arises due to fear of losing that sense of expertise. Right. So should I should I conclude that both are at fault, the patient and the doctor? The patient uh, is, does not have the patience to listen to the doctor's uh, belief, and the doctor is not able to deliver according to the patient's understanding. Is that so? So that's well, the reason why. I, uh, rather than saying it's it's either person's fault, I would say that it's it's the responsibility of everybody. Hmm. The doctor has a responsibility. The patient has a responsibility. You and I have responsibilities to share this message. The society has a responsibility to start talking about it. We are all responsible for healing, right? Mm -hmm. any, any deficiency in any one aspect affects the entire population, right? You just need a little bit of, of misinformation or a little bit of ignorance, and that'll mm -hmm. spread like wildfire. And that's the predominant state today regarding healing. People are even afraid to use the word if they're a professional, right? Nice. So. So yes, I think we are all responsible for it. Physicians have to start looking into if mm. this is healing, how does that connect with my understanding of knowledge, with my understanding of medicine, right? How do I bridge that? And right. everybody has to start looking into that same thing. Remember, ultimately, uh, a physician and a patient in that particular encounter, they're playing separate roles. But right. ultimately, right. all physicians are patients too, right? At some point. Uh, yes. Right? <laughs> people, when we talk about anatomy, physicians are not just talking about your anatomy. We're talking about our anatomy, right? Yes. <laughs> they really, you know, mind is, is secondary. It's not really that important. We're not just talking about your mind. We're talking about our own mind. Right. So all human beings, we're all in this together. And it's imperative for all of us to take on this responsibility of looking into healing and how healing is possible. Right. So that's a revolutionary mindset that you've got. And I, 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 mean, I think it's the first step you need to take is convince the other physicians, because for others, they might be thinking like, this is some kind of, uh, you're breaking the rules of medicine and the bringing medicine to the people according to their understanding and telling them to believe something they've been believing that is not possible all these years. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I I, I see it differently. I'm not asking people to believe something. Yeah. I'm asking people to open their minds and think. Mm -hmm. 
consider. So when you hear the story of, of Jacqueline on our YouTube channel, on the Healing is Possible YouTube channel, right? Who healed from Crohn's disease after 90 minutes of a hypnosis session, after decades of symptoms, or Raghav Anand, who, who healed from 20 plus years of diabetes medications in 11 days. I listened to that one. Yeah. Or, or uh, of uh, Tumi Johnson, whose asthma went away and whose depression went away after she changed her food and changed her career. And you'll see over the few months, the next, the stories are going to come out. We think are amazing, impossible, miraculous, right? But guess what? These happened. These are people sharing their own stories. Wow. So it is absolutely possible, but I'm not asking you to believe anything. Listen to the stories, think, consider for yourself, formulate a hypothesis, and now investigate, right? On the, on the website, healthrevolution.org, we have the four engines of health and healing, nutrition, movement, connection, rest. We go into detail about them. And there mm -hmm. are articles about this on the website. Read the articles, investigate in your own life and decide for yourself whether it's true or not, right? Don't believe what I'm saying. Consider yes. it, investigate and decide for yourself. Right. So unless there is a need, unless uh, the alarm rings for a person, I don't think that people are going to like, it's easy to convince people. It's not, easy. it's not that easy. Right. So we've been talking about healthrevolution.org all this time. Do elaborate about your mission. Yes. The mission is this to show people that not only is healing possible, but healing is happening all around you. People are healing from all kinds of conditions, but their stories don't get written up in medical journals. So when we say this diagnosis has X percent chance of getting better, that doesn't account for all these people for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. Because like in Jacqueline's case, when she healed from Crohn's disease, her gastroenterologist did a colonoscopy and said, this looks amazing, right? There's no disease to be seen. And he said, I, I wouldn't believe this. I can't believe this if I myself didn't do the colonoscopy. Well, guess right. what? He probably didn't write it up in a medical journal, right? So the story about Crohn's disease is the same in the medical journals as it has always been. Right. Mm. And the same for the vast majority of people who heal, even the people I've interviewed, they're a small fraction of all the people that have actually healed or are healing, but right. that's not accounted for in the prognosis that we give. Right. Yeah. So the mission is to show that yes, healing is possible, but number two, healing is happening all around you, all yeah. around you all the time. And if you investigate and consider these and see that these can be true, healing is possible and healing is happening then you will see that for you too, healing is inevitable. Healing is inevitable. Hmm. If we follow these four engines. Now, what form that takes, what that actually looks like for everybody is going to be different. But when we activate these four engines, healing is inevitable. So these are the three stages. Healing is possible. Investigate. Healing is happening. Recognize. Healing is inevitable. Enjoy. Rejoice. Wow. Wow. So, right. So, uh, as a common person, as a layman, I'm asking you, so is healing possible only for those chronic diseases or also for any kind of birth defects? Well, again, so this goes back to our conversation about what healing is, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, the, the stories about healing that get the most attention are the ones where all the symptoms reverse and the person is living this amazing new life. But you will see in some of the stories that we tell, hmm. it's not that the disease or the diagnosis went away, All but right. healing is also finding a deeper sense of meaning, right? Healing is also finding a bigger story. Healing okay. is also finding a broader context and a connection with oneself. So in any case, that's why we say in any case, healing can happen. But what form that takes depends on the particular person, the circumstance, but when we open up to that kind of healing, mm -hmm. then also the miraculous kinds of things that we call miracles, they can also happen. So we have to even expand our idea of healing. Healing is not only miracles, right? Healing is not only getting rid of the diagnosis. Healing is ultimately seeing ourselves more fully and completely. And that in itself has a healing effect. So it's more of an acceptance yeah, I, I'm, I'm wary of that word. I agree with you. <laughs> I'm also wary of that word because mm. we have to be careful of what we accept and what we don't right. accept, right? right. right. It, it's a recognition. It's a right. deepening. It's a sense of rest. 
and broader context and depth within oneself. True. Yes. Okay. Um, so, Doctor, you would uh, you mentioned earlier that you have uh, the teachings of Advaita Vedanta. How are you inculcating the same with medicine? So, you know, the the core tenet we can say of Advaita Vedanta is Aham Brahmasmi, right? It's the idea that let's say what I am is the ultimate nature of the universe, that the universe and me are not fundamentally different. And that the multiplicity of universe of the universe as beautiful and diverse and functional as it is, is one way to access the universe, is a way of seeing and interpreting the universe. And there are many different kinds of identities and layers of what we call a universe. And so there is this dance between let's call it unity and multiplicity, right? That all of us can experience. And mm -hmm. that is one of the deepest kinds of healings that can happen. So if this is the case, then we can say that the universe can be accessed in three different layers. And I call these the three minds, the first mind, second mind, and third mind. And the whole idea that healing is possible is that when we see ourselves more deeply, right? Through these different, let's say, lenses of the mind, these different yeah. mental configurations. When we see ourselves through these different layers, we immediately, immediately see that what we are is much more than a physical structure. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we see that we're much more than a physical structure, new ways of expressing, acting, functioning, seeing, relating, speaking, everything come to the forefront. And many times the mechanisms of health and disease are in those layers, right? Okay. So, so the bridges from this idea of Ambra Masmi, the fundamental unity of the universe, which also expresses as multiplicity, we see that there is much more to human anatomy than the physical structure. And okay. therefore we can access the deeper layers. And therefore we have more power in accessing, developing, honing, healing. Now, a big part of that is it's not only an individual phenomenon, right? Ahambra Masmi means everything yes. is related. And so that relational aspect with others is so important. The relational aspect with society is so important. There's such a strong correlation between socioeconomic status and health, right? right. True. You see that, you know, it's very popular to say that, um, that chronic conditions are a result of um, the success that we've had, right? Or wealthy countries, chronic conditions. Yes. But you will see, if you look across the globe, if you look at the WHO, they have statistics showing that there's a very clear correlation between disease and lower socioeconomic status. And mm. we see that everywhere. You see that especially also in, in what we call mental health, right? If, you're, right? if socioeconomic conditions are difficult, you're going to have more distress. And if you have yeah. more distress, you're going to be ultimately leading to what we call disease, right? right? There are strong correlations between all of these. So this three minds framework helps us see that all of these things are interrelated. And the when we remove the society, when we remove the environment, and when we remove the deeper aspects of ourselves, and all of this is restricted and compressed into physical anatomy of an individual, how can you possibly make a complete diagnosis? How could you possibly have a system where healing is the baseline? It's not possible. That's what we need to change. Right. So, so I, I'm getting a different, totally different dimension of spirituality from a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the sense that, look, I also think we're on a time now, we're yeah. in a time now that we don't need this word spirituality anymore. Right. You, know, you only need the word spirituality as long as it's something else. Mm. Right? I have my daily life and I have my rational mind and I have my science and I, I have this and that. And then, you know, I also have my spirituality. I also meditate. I also, that's, that's all spirituality. That's, right. We're done with that. You know, at some point it has to become simply seeing deeply, right? Simply knowing myself better, simply relating with the world more completely. And as a person does this and the vision deepens and the experience of life deepens, there's no such thing as spirituality because <laughs> the camera in front of you is not just the camera. It's much more than this, right? The conversation you're having is not just two bodies making sounds. It's much more than this. And that is everything 
that what we call spirituality had been pointing to, asking mm. a person to sit and meditate, is to have this deeper, richer experience that goes far beyond the classic first mind stories we're given in the world. True, true, true. Yes. So, all right. So moving forward, doctor, uh, I've seen you've written two books. What are the books about? Yeah, the first book is uh, Michael Angel's Medicine. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of recounting my training in medical school and in residency and yes. how I began to reconcile that with my childhood experiences and ultimately had to start saying something, right? It was this, it was this point where it could not be you know, contained anymore and it just kind of overflowed. So it talks about how redefining the human body can transform health and healthcare. And that's this, it's basically looking at the human anatomy as not just a body, but also the mind and also energy. Right, So three different layers at that time of human anatomy. And it talks about the importance of investigating what mind is, the invest, importance of investigating what we call consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it looks at the fundamental uh, problem in healthcare, right? right which is the, right. the informational problem. Mm -hmm. And the informational problem is the very information that we have of how we look at the human being right. is so radically incomplete that we could not possibly discover what health truly means with that yeah. kind of information. So we need to complete our understanding of being human. And there are many other things in there, the science of well-being, what a future health system looks like, what we have to do to get there. I have a letter to physicians in there. Wow. So check it out. A lot of things in that. The second book hmm. called, is this a dream? Hmm. And that's basically a question hmm. that I put to the reader and we start to draw the parallels between what a dream is, what is called awakening, what is called enlightenment, what is called spirituality. And we try to take all the, what's the word, the, the, the labels and the, the, the associations, you know, yes. the stereotypes, that's the word, from these words. Just remove them all mm. and look at the naked experience right. of what we're talking about mm. and see that you know, all of these things we call science, spirituality, and philosophy, and daily life, and all these things. Like, we made up these categories. You and I, as human beings, yes. we made them up, right? They don't exist in nature. You, know, right. you, don't see, you don't see the deer in the woods talking about spirituality, or you don't see the lion roaring right. about philosophy, right? Yes. Because they have an integrated experience of life. So right. let's not forget that there is a core experience of living, which is interpreted through various lenses of the human mind as all of these categories. Right. And let's turn the spotlight back on that mm -hmm. and then see what that reveals to us about everything. Right, right. So, yeah. So getting to know about the experiences of people who have healed from your help with your guidance. And uh, I, I guess you, you have started your podcast and uh, it's running successfully. Yes, we just started on yeah. May 7th. So less than a week ago. We right. just hit 100 subscribers, I think, in the last 24 hours. So we're very cool. happy about that. And right. our next goal is 1,000 subscribers. So, you know, the Healing is Possible channel on YouTube. Check us out and help yes. us get to 1,000. My best wishes, Women's Media wishes you all the best because he's a doctor on a mission. So, of course, people would accept you with wide arms. <laughs> some will. And some will push me away with closed arms. That's exactly what what we need, right? I mean, we need to put a message out there right. that is true. Yes. Fundamentally, that is true. Hmm. And um, not everybody wants to hear it, and that's right. okay. What we need to do is put what is true, what is possible out there. And there are way more people who have open arms than closed arms. So right. help us spread this message. All the very best to that, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for being in my podcast today. It was great talking to you and great insights about everything, the human body and a lot of teachings today. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Revati. Now that Dr. Anoop has opened the gates of hope and healing to us, it's totally upon us to choose the right way of life. To let us know how you felt about today's episode, send me an email to womensperia at gmail.com. Womensperia pages can be found in LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. 
In YouTube, you can watch the full videos of the interviews that happen in Women's Period podcast. There is a Women's Period Tamil podcast as well in which you can listen to inspirational stories in Tamil. So until next time, this is Revathi signing off from Women's Period, contagiously inspiring. There is hope and you can heal.